And, and there is something of the moment of worship, which is to be enjoyed and savoured. And, and those are the things which I think are fuel for us, in the, especially in the weariness. And a lot of us have been feeling weary in the last couple of years. Um, it's, it's savoring the moment. And, uh, you know, especially after the sermon, you, somebody's preached God's words. Our hearts have been stirred by it. Then we, we, we stand up, we respond in song. We want to we wanna savour that moment, like putting the, the cork in a nice bottle of wine. We want to savour it and lock it in. Hello and welcome to Independence, the FIEC podcast. My name is Adrian Reynolds. I'm head of National Ministries. I'm here today with Phil Moore. Hello, Phil. Hi there, Adrian. Thanks Good for coming you. all the way to Market Harbour and to FIEC Towers. Great to have you here. Just tell us who you are, a little yeah, bit about yeah. yourself. So I'm the Director of Ministry at Cornerstone Church. Well, what does in that Ontario? mean, Director Good. of Ministry? It sounds very grand, doesn't it? It does. <laughs> I don't remember seeing that in 1 Timothy <laughs> 2 and 3. It's not on that list, is it? No. But yeah, I lead the uh, Music Ministry and the Youth Ministry as well at Cornerstone. Great. And it's great joy to do both of those things. And tell us a little bit about home life and family, that yeah. kind of stuff. So I'm Phil, I'm married to Jill. Um, we didn't call Phil the boys... Phil and Jill. We didn't call the boys Bill and Will, although we were tempted. <laughs> I've got two boys uh, as well, two young boys, Elijah and Jonah. And uh, they take up the majority of our time and keep us keep us going, which is great. And uh, we, uh, yeah, so we, we're, we're a very active family life. And uh, yeah, we, we, we enjoy, um, yeah, getting out and about and, and doing lots Phil, of things. And lots of us have enjoyed your music, perhaps possibly without even realising it. So you help lead the music at our leaders conference yep. in recent years. And people may have seen you at, at Keswick as well. That's you're, right. you're at Keswick again this year, are you? Uh, we were there, there briefly in week one, but but we're, we're, we're having a kind of year off doing the, the kind of normal weeks of Keswick, but uh, we're involved with the FIC Leadership Conference this year and a few other bits and pieces. And I do a bit of songwriting as well, which Paul might have picked up um, during uh, the last couple of years. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's that's great fun. And I really enjoy doing that. Great. Well, um, I'm, I'm a musician as well, not as accomplished as you, and um, but I am a musician as well. And we love talking music, don't we? Uh, but we're not here to talk to musicians. We're here to talk to leaders leaders yeah, especially definitely. and to help leaders think about music and, and actually broader than that singing or yes. sorry not broader narrower than that singing which is the big thing why is singing such a big thing yeah i think i think singing is 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 absolutely key to what we do we, we spent spend uh, probably the majority of our time meeting together in the church in as gallowed church either singing or or preparing to sing as part of as part of what we're doing you right. know the sermon which is in the middle of the sermon middle of the service which is the most important activity that we do but but the response to that is 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 singing and singing is a is a is a word ministry we we sing god's word to one another as we gather together. Right, so Colossians 3, we could go there, yep. couldn't we? If, yep. if we wanted to trawl through the Bible verses, I think people yep. know that well. You are you are singing the yep. word of Christ, aren't you? Yes. To, to one another, yeah. That's yep. it. And it's, it's, it's obviously a kind of a three-dimensional thing. We sing to God, we sing to one another, and we sing to ourselves. You know, we, we talk a lot about preaching the gospel to ourselves, but we, we actually, as we sing, we sing the gospel to ourselves. We remind ourselves of truths of God's word. We come and we, and we, it's a ministry to ourselves as well as to one another. So uh, singing sing. is the thing really, not music. Singing, yeah. singing is the thing. Absolutely. And the, the music is the it's the stuff that helps the singing That's right. work, if you like. In singing is the main life. event, absolutely, yeah. in what we do. And, and I think one of the things that's happened through the pandemic is we've obviously not been able to, first of all, not been able to meet together. Then yeah. when we could meet together, yeah. certainly in England and Wales, we couldn't sing together. And then when we could sing together, it was with masks. Yeah. And uh, now we're looking like we're, we're freed from all that. I think we're, we're rediscovering, aren't we, the joy of singing and just yeah. what, we, what we've what we lost yeah. when we're not we're, able to do it. I think we're relearning as well. I think uh, we've, we've definitely, in this last... And one of the great sadnesses, I think, of the last couple of years has been the limitations on singing, understandably, of course. But I think we we, we need to relearn what it means to sing well uh, as a congregation. Well, what does it mean to sing well? What what do you mean by that? What, what, yeah. What's singing well? Yeah. Is it yeah. just... You know, loud voices, or is it more complex than that? I think I think there is an element of that, but but the way in which we sing communicates something about what we believe. Right. I think it absolutely does. You know, what what are we, how we sing uh, uh, communicates something both to one another within the church family. Uh, you know, our, the passion that we have for the Lord. I think that that's communicated in the way that we sing, and that's really important, not just for fellow Christians in the church, but also those who are, are yet to put their trust in Christ, the non-believers in our church family. What is what we the way in which we sing, 
what does that communicate about what we believe and our affection and love yeah. for the Lord? Which is, and that's not just something actually limited to church, is it? That's something you see in the world. Yes. You know, go along to a sports match or, or something like that and you yeah. see people singing and you see the joy or the frustration often if you support the team I do in you know, in, in the sort of faces of people yeah. who are singing. That communicates something, doesn't it? That's, that's a universal thing. Yeah, and to the yeah. next generation as well. I think, you know, I, I want our boys growing up in church to be able to look around and see that people really take this seriously. People are really yeah. for this. Yeah. They really believe what they say and what they sing. So actually, that's an interesting point. Just um, We had Mel Lacey here the other day. We were talking about kids in church, and we didn't really touch on this, but actually the kids need to see their parents and other adults singing, don't they? Yeah, definitely, definitely. This is an intergenerational thing, and it's one of, one of the opportunities we have to have a kind of an intergenerational aspect to the, the gathering is, is kind of looking around and, you know, our, our all-age, all-in, opportunities that we have in church um, are, are so important I think for communicating that yeah now as as a leader therefore of a church um, not as a musician but as a leader uh, what you what you're saying I think is is that singing really matters yeah absolutely um, now if singing matters what matters most words or music <laughs> well as somebody who, who, who definitely I'm you know classically trained musician music and the kind of musical side of, of worship is probably what I where I'd feel more, most comfortable in terms of songwriting and everything else but you know the, the words in which, that we sing are definitely the most important thing so it, would you rather um, a great tune with average words <laughs> or great words with an average tune you've got to choose <laughs> well yeah if you if you if, if you put me in a corner and, and said i had to choose one it would definitely be great words with an average tune um, we, we can you we can failed enjoy. in the answer the, the answer is i'm not prepared to accept average in, in any area that, that should really be the That's answer it. as long as it's memorable you know it could be memorable in how average it is the tune but it's, it's got to it's got to be able to be picked up and and that's one of the biggest things about music isn't it that over the years we learn the alphabet by singing the alphabet we, that's right yeah we, yeah. we we learn so many different aspects of, of things that we have growing up and we hold on to that and and you know it, maybe this is a sadness for some preachers but we we go out of we go out of church don't we humming the the this the songs that we've 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 sung uh, with the words and the melodies of those in our hearts during the week and those are the things that we often draw on and we we, we, we will remember that more than we remember the three points of the sermon mm. and so that's why it's important that we sing songs which are full of truth which are good songs which are rooted in god's words which communicate something which has a depth to it rather than so, just shallowness. so songs and things we're singing need to be contemporary i don't mean contemporary as in modern mm. i mean contemporary as accessible don't they yeah. so yeah. even if the tune is old yeah it needs to be something that you can you can get into if you yes. like yeah without getting too technical <laughs> you, you, you know it needs to be something that resonates with you doesn't it yeah definitely for precisely yeah. that reason you're describing yeah, yeah. And, and and you know those are timeless truths which could be in a, a hymn which is 500 years old uh, and there, there are truths and so it's not that we have to sing songs which are new Although we, we, I think we should, you know, that's instructed to us yeah. in the Psalms, yeah. isn't it? Sing a new song to the Lord. But but we should sing songs which communicate things which are still relevant and still felt emotions. So that, you know, we, we've been singing a lot of songs in the last couple of years about the trials of life, the storms of life, yeah. when when things are hard, when we're weary, when we're we're downtrodden. And, you know, we, we lift our eyes to, to the Lord. And, and I think that's been so helpful as we've, we've kind of pastored one another. With music. So I think what you're saying, and I agree with you, that as a, as a church leader, not as a musician, but as a church leader, what we sing really matters in church. Yeah, it's yeah. not a filler. It's not a kind of, um, you know, um, top of the pops, top 40 countdown. Yes, yeah. yeah. Um, it is actually really important just to the coherence of the whole service yeah. and actually helping people not just to worship in the moment, but actually to go out with the right attitude yeah, and go yeah. out wanting to give themselves to the Lord and serve the Lord. Yeah, definitely. I think as we assess the music in our church, as we look at, you know, how people sing, you know, I think that's a really good question to ask. Maybe, you know, in your in your leadership team meetings or, or as you review a Sunday, do you ask the question, you know, how, has, how did the church sing this week? I think that's really important. I, th I think we've got to recognise it in its rightful place. And there's something... I'd speak, as a church leader, be speaking to a musician, which, which is helpful about understanding that it is it is the gospel, not music, which is the power of God for salvation. It, yeah, it, yeah. Music is is not the main thing in what we do. 
And I think that's both both liberating, maybe where we have frustrations with the music in our church, or frustrations with people not really engaging with singing as we we, we right. as passionately as we, we might hope that they would. Or, you know, and it actually it, it, it then it then it feeds into how we do music in church. You know, it doesn't matter how out of tune your piano is or how out of time your drummer is. Actually, or even whether you have a drummer. That's it, exactly. And uh, that may be controversial as well. But uh, I, I think it... Well, not having a drummer <laughs> or having a drummer. <laughs> For me, I love drums. It would be controversial not to have one. Uh, but it, it, it's comforting, isn't it, and liberating to realise that music is not the main event. And also for, for for musicians, where you know our hearts are 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 hard and often proud when it comes to to the challenges of thinking about music. We want our music to to sound good. We want to 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 be known for a church that sings well and that does music well. Yeah. So g- good music in church is actually enabling people to sing well. That would yeah. be a good definition yeah. of it, yeah. I guess. Yeah. Definitely. It's not about having a band necessarily. No. That might not be appropriate where you are. You might not have the resources. You yeah. might not have the you know, you might not have lots of things in place, sure. but so it's about enabling people to, to sing their hearts out, yeah, essentially, absolutely. to sing absolutely. in a way that's appropriate. Yeah. What does that mean for choosing songs? Mm. So here I am, you know, I've got my service, hour and a quarter, whatever it is. Um, you know, do I just kind of go through the book, um, you know, choose the next number along? Um, who, who, who even chooses the songs? I guess there'll be some churches and some church leaders who are listening to this where it's the, the pastor classically is choosing all the songs, planning out the service. There'll be other churches, perhaps at the other extreme, where everything is delegated out from the pastor. He just prepares a sermon. Yeah. Um, is, is there a right or a wrong here? Or is uh, how do you find a happy medium? I think a lot of that's going to be context-specific context because you know some of our pastors will, will be musical, will know songs, will have a musical ear. That doesn't necessarily mean that you're a musician, but I think some people have a natural instinct to know which are the best songs to sing in right. a particular point, you know it. You know, as as I said before, music is a, a word ministry, so we we need to be people who are in the word, in the passage that we're looking at on a particular Sunday. And you know, the way that we do things at, at our church is that that the, the 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 sermon and the content of the passage that we are looking at in the sermon will will drive our song choices for the whole service. Right. And and some churches may do things differently. They may have more of a kind of a liturgical model of, you know, working through, um, you know, adoration, confession, repentance, yep. all of that. Yep. And we can echo that in our songs and that's brilliant. But we, we've got to be people who are in the Word. So if you've got musicians who are uh, have have a kind of nose for how to kind of relate the songs that we sing to the, the text of, of God's Word, that's wonderful. You know, listen to them hear them out and it might be they have a suggestion for for a song which is a, a new song or or something which would fit particularly well with a theme or a series that that you're working through at that point um but i think that's good for us as past as pastors as well is to to develop that kind of instinct uh, if we if we can and some some will struggle with that more so i don't think there's a right or a wrong answer uh i think where this question kind of plays out mostly uh interestingly is 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 in the choice of new songs you right. know so across a year yeah. You as a church, you know, I, I I think we probably at Cornerstone probably wouldn't introduce more than seven or eight okay. new songs. We're six, so yeah, I'm, you're six. I'm 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 with you there. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, it I doesn't think sound very many, does it? It doesn't. It's no. not. You know, it's not a lot. You know, I worked in a church a few years ago, and, and we we kind of said uh, we started a new service, and we were trying to reach out to people who were kind of less church. And so we started off with twenty songs, and we sang twenty songs. For a whole year, we didn't, we didn't, we didn't go beyond the the, the remit of that, and uh, you know that was great. We had the opportunity to teach, like you know, it was like one week. It's like we're going to teach you a new song in Christ alone. You know, <laughs> it's great. What a gift! It's like here's here's another one. You know, ten thousand reasons or whatever it might be. I try and, and see how how long we can go without singing in Christ alone. <laughs> I, I broke my record of a whole year, but um, then I lost it last weekend. Anyway, but uh, you know, when when you kind of are thinking really about. You know, we've got five or six new songs or, or however many that you decide is appropriate for your context. That really makes you think about, the, you know, which songs are we going to choose? It's got to be absolutely A1 top drawer to be a, a yeah, song which yeah. kind of passes the test, if you like, to, 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 to be chosen for, for, for your... And your that's when you do want to be working with your musicians, right? You know, even yes. if it's Mrs. Jones playing the piano, yes. you want to make sure she can play it. Yeah. <laughs> you want to make sure it's singable, don't you? Yeah, And absolutely. as we've talked about just, just now, that the content is absolutely cracking, that it's, yeah. it's going to serve you and it, it's yeah. full of truth. 
Yeah. yeah. It's got to be something that the church is going to want to sing. Yeah. You know, we, and, and that is where, you know, the, the question of what's more important, music or words? Well, both is the answer. Yeah. yeah. Um, we, we, the, 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 the melody drives the truth, you know, actually in terms of it, it, it plants that in our hearts. It's memorable. It's the thing that we kind of become affectionate and warm yeah, towards. Yeah. And, uh, and, 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 and that's why it's really important for us to think mm. about. Let's come back that. to the melody in just a moment, just on the word still. I yeah. think one of the things that's probably happened in the last, 20 years I'm just mm. joking about in Christ alone I think it's a great it's a great hymn um, is actually there's, there's been a recovery of content in mm. a way hasn't there kind of led by people like Stuart Townend really yeah. that suddenly people are writing hymns again essentially mm. they're mm. more contemporary perhaps in nature and, and music yeah. but essentially people are coming up with four verse crackers yeah. Yeah. And, and not just a few lines I think that's that's that's, yeah. that's been really helpful for the church, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. I, I think there's there's more substance in some of the songs that should come out in the last 20 years. Yeah. And there was probably a period of time, you know, probably before my time, maybe during your time, where you can remember a lot of songs which would have been more simple choruses. I think they totally have their place in the context. You know, when I'm, when I'm leading a service or planning a service, it's almost like planning a meal. You know, you, you, you don't want to have... If you had just, I'm going to have some steak with some steak on the side and some more steak, which is really substantial, which might be like a really substantial hymn. I think it's also good to have other things which might be a little bit lighter or shorter or different. And so part of the menu might be, actually, we're going to have a kid's song in this service. Yeah. Some yeah. of us have kid's songs every week. Some of us maybe just from time to time. Uh, and we might have have, have, a, have an older hymn. We might have a, a modern hymn. We, 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 we like to to choose songs, the best of, of what we can choose from as many different sources, if you like. Yeah. As we, so as actually, we again, it's about giving the service a coherence, yes. making sure it sort of fits together logically, if yeah. you like, emotionally, all those kinds, all those kinds of things. It's a, it's a long way from when I first started playing the piano for our Crusader group um, in the 80s. And I was playing, I love the flowers, I love the trees, but most of all, I love daisies. <laughs> and um, I'm quite glad we've left those moments behind. Um, now, you, you said a little bit there about uh, music and emotion. Music mm. is an emotional thing, mm. isn't it? Mm. And mm. I think as conservative evangelicals, we, we have a slightly tricky relationship with emotion. Yeah. Um, we're slightly nervous on the one hand of manipulation mm -hmm. and, and emotion can be manipulative and music can be manipulative. Yeah. And so we, I kind of, you know, this is perhaps a little bit of a caricature, but we feel that, you know, we just sing the, the solid hymn tunes that yeah. don't really engage with the emotion that much, especially in today's generation. You know, we're on safe ground there. Mm. But there's something good, isn't there, and holy mm. about emotion. How, what is it, first of all, and how do we guard yeah. against that? the kind of the extreme of manipulation. I think it's a helpful caution to have. Uh, I do also think it's it's important to say that we are emotional. And yeah. well, you and I certainly are. <laughs> <laughs> there is an aspect that it is good and right for us to enjoy and appreciate the fact that music is artistically beautiful, we hope, and that it engages our hearts and our and it, yep. it goes deeper than just engaging our minds. You know, it Which is it why we sing rather than just saying words together. Yes. And, and anyone knows if you so let's take In Christ Alone, since yeah. we're talking about it. Yeah. Um you could read out In Christ Alone together or, or yeah. read it out just off a piece of paper. It's a quite a nice piece of poetry, yeah. but it doesn't have nearly the force yeah. as when you sing to what's essentially quite a simple tune. Yeah. Yeah. in three four yeah. it has power doesn't it, it has emotion yeah. Yeah. yeah absolutely and and it has the rises and the falls even within a melody and I, I think we can wrongly look at the kind of ccm contemporary christian music um as being particularly guilty of kind of being something which is is emotionally manipulative but music has been engaging our emotions since the dawn of time you know we we are emotional. so isn't it interesting when you sorry i interrupt you but yeah. when you read through i mean we don't know what they are but when you read through the psalms yeah the number of them say this is the tune you should sing yes for this. yes and you kind of imagine oh, that's interesting well these are the instruments yeah. you should use so yeah. clearly some of the psalms are uh, are to be sung in yeah. a certain way yes. engaging the emotion yeah. in a certain way one assumes and maybe in glory when we can hear some of those tunes i can't wait for that when we, you know just, what, what was that supposed to sound like you know yeah. those questions so that's what you sound. do with a six eight we'll be saying <laughs> so that's a musician's little comment there. <laughs> but yeah I, I don't think we should be afraid of our emotions when we when it comes to music and you know we often talk about this when it comes to young people and you know big conferences or festivals and things like that where they might go away and kind of feel kind of whipped up into yeah, yeah. by the music but yeah. and yeah we've got to caution that but, you, but but if that is 
a genuine response to God's words being sung and heard and played out in their hearts, then praise God, you know, that, that actually they have responded to yeah. the goodness of yeah. God and, and enjoyed and savoured that moment. Because sometimes what we can do, and, and this we're, we can be guilty of this in our circles, is we, we sing the song and then we immediately sit down and we kind of, and, and there is something of the moment of worship, which is to be enjoyed and savoured. And, and those are the things which I think are fuel for us, in the we- especially in the weariness. And a lot of us have been feeling weary in the last couple of years. Um, it's it's savouring the moment. And, uh, you know, especially after the sermon, you, somebody's preached God's word. Our hearts have been stirred by it. Then we, we we stand up, we respond in song. We wanna we wanna savor that moment, like putting the, the cork in a nice bottle of wine. We wanna savor it and lock it in. And 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 some of that is 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 in the way in which we we go about leading that yeah, song yeah. and enjoying that. Yeah. Um let's talk a little bit more about choosing the songs. Yeah. Who who chooses them? Who's responsible or who's re- let me ask a different question, which may have a different answer. Who's responsible? For the songs in the service, do you think? Yeah, I think it's the pastor. It's, it's got to be the, the the lead minister is responsible for that overseeing that yeah. in terms of how that's deployed and who who is is feeding into that conversation. I I, I think that's definitely yeah. As we said, so it's like every other aspect yeah. of church yeah. life. Yeah. Um, if you're thinking about pastoral care yeah. in the church, um, you might delegated in a certain way yeah. might be done through your small groups for example but it's still the leaders of the church isn't it that have responsibility for yeah, that definitely. and you're saying it's the same with with the singing it's a word ministry in the yeah. church so the, the leaders of the church are still yeah. bearing that responsibility yeah. but how that cashes out is going to be very different at cornerstone yeah. and how that plays out like in our church. team you know i would get a phone call on a wednesday or thursday usually from somebody who's planning a service or preaching and they say i just wrestling with which song to choose at the end here. And they'll, they'll bounce a few ideas. And I'll say, well, have you thought about this one? Here's three options possibly to, which you might want to finish with. They may not have yet finished writing their sermon, <laughs> but you know they're, yeah. they're beginning to come in to land on, on, on some of the ideas of where they might finish and end up. And, and so that becomes a conversation. Uh, there, there's some tools you can use for that. Um, you know, Music Ministry UK have got a part of their website, which is called Service Planner. I think it's music-ministry.org. Um, we'll put a link, I'm sure, to yep, that. Yep. Um, there's a service planner on there where you can see a thematic index of, uh, like you would have in an old hymn book, but a, a, with, with some more modern songs as well included in there. Um, that's a great place to go if you're kind of thinking, I'm preaching on redemption or um, restoration or something. You know, and I think I want a song which just, brings us in. And, you know, as we say, some people will just have a natural instinct when it comes to that. But there is a danger that we just, we just get into the rut of choosing the same five songs mm. to finish a service. What's your, um, so this is an interesting question. You might not know the answer precisely. What do you think is the size of the repertoire at Cornerstone? Oh. How many songs? Across a year, uh, yeah, I need to look up our, our index again. Uh, you know, I would have thought we probably have available to sing maybe two or 300 songs. Okay, yeah. But across a year, we might sing 100 to 150 okay. songs. That's pretty like similar, that. yeah. So we have a we have folders of music, yeah. and we have a top 200. Yeah. And I say to the pastor, these are the ones that we we know well. Yeah. We can sing other ones, but these are the ones we really know well. And we're constantly reviewing that, you know. So every year, we'll 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 have a little kind of go through the folder, and we think, well, this one's yeah. probably had its time now for us in the season. And that's, yeah, that's quite harsh. Do songs <laughs> do songs come out of fashion more quickly than they used to? You know, if I'm if I'm leading a service. Um, um, you know, I'm still remembering Shine Jesus Shine, which has fallen out of fashion. Although I think it's got great words. It's a great song. <laughs> um, so, so does the songs go out of fashion more quickly than they used to? They can do. And, and some of that is probably connected to how we use a song. So Shine Jesus Shine probably went out of fashion because we did it too much. Okay. And maybe become Camilla were tired of it. Some of it might be the kind of musical arrangement or style in which it was played originally, and and we kind of latched on to doing a particular song in a particular way. And we haven't done what we often do with hymns, which is where we, we will take a hymn, and we might have a, a variety of different ways to play that one song, and and so that is stood the test of time because we reinvented how yeah, we do it yeah. or we've kind of got so um, about that. a great example of that actually is um, lots of ch- song lots of churches and leaders would love singing be thou my vision yeah or yeah. lord be my vision if modernized version which i'll come back to perhaps in just a moment um which was originally written in three four yeah most churches nowadays would sing it in four four yeah which just gives it a slightly more contemporary feel and that's Absolutely. just a great example actually yeah. of, of how a hymn has just been given it's a sort of rejuvenation by by yeah. singing it a slightly different way but some songs i think you're right are of a season of a time and i think that's okay you know um, um for it to, to kind of say 
we, we're, we're moving away from that song and moving, moving on to a different group. And there might be other reasons why we, we choose to do that. And um, yeah, I think it's good for us to, to seek to be always just reviewing what we sing. Yeah. And that will be both yeah. in content and okay. style and everything else. Okay. Um, so I didn't tell you I was going to ask you this, slightly more contentious. Modernising words of old songs? I like I like not doing that actually. Okay. So my I hate preference. not doing that. So we, we are on different <laughs> sides of the table. Tell me your reasoning. I'll tell you mine. I don't know. It's really interesting. Probably it's the way I've been brought up and my my kind of context. I think you know you take a song like How Great Thou Art and you try to make it How Great You Are, yeah. and it just feels slightly clumsy. Well, some some are. I mean, it's interesting. The Praise Hymn Book, which I'm a great fan of. Yes, yeah, it's um, great. We'll it's put, really we'll good. put the link on the on yeah. the bottom of the um, uh, at the bottom of the podcast page um modernized all their songs apart from how great thou art yes. and great is thy faithfulness That's essentially interesting. because they, they found it difficult i'll tell you why i think it's a great idea um i i think actually we've we've always been modernizing yeah. songs so there aren't many people that sing before jehovah's awful throne sure because the word awful doesn't mean today to us yeah. what it meant uh, some time ago um but i think just like we well, not we. Most churches would use a modern Bible translation because they want to make the word accessible. I think we've got to be thinking all the time what makes the word accessible. That's yes. the key question. Yes. Now, if people can cope yes. with these and nows, and that, that's fine. Of course, it's sorry. I'm not. I'm not. Yeah. Not going to go to the stake yeah. over it. But actually, I want to make the words that we're singing as accessible to the people as possible. And it seems to yes. me that's that's the key question. Yeah. Actually, not that's whether right. you modernise or not. Yeah, and I, I would probably choose to teach a new song rather than seek to take an old song and modernise that. Okay. And, and there's good reasons for singing songs with familiar tunes and, and all of that. And, you know, I totally, I totally get the logic on that. Um, I, I think at the heart of hearts, I'm probably a traditionalist and uh, I don't like change. <laughs> but uh, so I would probably choose a new song. Well, I, I love using a tablet, songs. but I also own an ink pen. Yes. So I'm, I think I'm just confused. Yes. <laughs> I can't decide whether I'm a traditionalist or a, yes. a modernist. Yes. And so other tools for helping leaders plan services? Yeah, so um, uh, so there's a, a website called um, Song Select, which is connected to CCLI. Yep, I think yep. that's a really helpful place. They have you know tens of thousands of songs on they there. Do, so yeah. that's one yeah. of the challenges is that there's there's a there's an awful lot of songs on there. I, I think uh, you know going to conferences. You know, over the last number of years, uh, the Keswick Convention has produced uh, an album uh, which has you know ten or twelve songs on there. Some new songs that would be a good place to go if you're looking for. Oh, it'd be, it'd be great for us to think about introducing a right. couple of new songs. Okay. And, and that's, yeah. that's a good place to go. But things like the Praise Him book that you've talked about, Music Ministry UK. Um, yeah, there's, there's various yeah. resources. The, gr the great thing, of course, are going to a, a conference or yeah. listening to a CD from, you know, maybe it's Together for the Gospel. Yeah, yeah. Or it, maybe it's a, um, you know, a live recording from a Sovereign Grace, whatever it is. Yes. And the great thing about those songs is they've been tried and tested congregationally. Yes. That's the thing. You yes. can, if you listen to a contemporary Christian music album, yeah. there might be some great tunes for you to listen to on your iPod. Yes. Um, but they're not necessarily singable, are they? Yes. Yeah. And I think you've got to keep thinking about that. We, we want to, yeah. we're trying to enable people to sing, aren't we, into yeah. worship? Yeah, that's right. And I think, I think making the most of those opportunities to hear how, the, how, do, how is the church singing this new song? And we can get a little bit of that from listening online on YouTube. We've got to be slightly cautious of YouTube as well because I think it, it can set unrealistic expectations yeah, yeah. for how you might deliver a song, how might that might look and be played by your band or your musicians in your church. And that could be crippling as well. And you know, yeah, kind of by yeah. thinking we've got to hit the standard and, and you know, YouTube, you've got to remember that these songs have been produced professionally and, and, uh, money has been spent on, 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 on that and, and all that as well. Yeah. So basically what works for you yeah. and what works for you as you lead the church to enable the church to sing. Yeah. That's yeah. the key thing really. That's keep coming back to that. Yes. What is going to work in this church? And if it's, if it's a piano with some older hymns that people really know yeah. and love singing. Yeah. Great. Yeah. No problem with that. God um, has given you as a local church, everything you need in, a, in order to, to lead his people in the song praises and song yeah. worship. Okay. You know, I think we can often look at what the church down the road's doing or, or and how they're using their technology and they've got a fantastic music group and all of that. We, can, we, we want the electric guitars or we want just to have more than one musician. And actually God has given us what we need and uh, how we use that is, is, is up to us. And we, 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 we've got to make the most of what we have. Right. So actually some contentment. Contentment's a great ministry thing anyway, isn't it, in all areas mm -hmm. of ministry life? Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, as a preacher, 
I need to be content with the preaching gift that God has given me and mm. not be completely overawed by the person that everyone listens to online. Yeah. Um, actually, I'm, I'm the person that God has given to that congregation that time. There needs to be a, con- a godly contentment about that. And the same mm. applies to music and mm. the, the musical context you have. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks very much, Phil. It's, it's been great having you with us. Really enjoyed chatting. We could just chat forever, couldn't we, really? And um, I'm going to ask you back because one of the things I'd, I'd love to chat to you about a little bit more that we will do in a future episode is just helping leaders think how they pass to musicians. Yeah. It's not often talked about that, but I think that's really important. If musicians are going to serve the church, how do we nurture them? How do we care mm-hmm. for them? So come back, will you, and talk to us about that. But for the moment, thanks for joining us. And that's thanks great. for listening in to Independence. Uh, don't forget, you can subscribe to Independence through all the normal podcasts providers. I look forward to seeing you soon.